Okay, in this video it's uh, not a tutorial, it's more me just playing around with a, a metal volcano problem that I've been having and how I go about resolving it and figuring things out. Uh, most people are only interested in the end result, and if you're interested in the end result, yeah, that's fine. But uh, I'm sure there's a few people who'd like to actually see some of the things that goes on in the background when you're trying to figure out how to get some of these more uh, complicated designs up and running and ironing out some of the kinks. Also, it, it also reveals some, some kind of interesting information about some of the game mechanics. So I have been having a... Well, I've had reported problems with the metal volcanoes. I've also had one myself where tiles of metal will actually form on the cooling spot. Um, this is uh, jamming up people's uh, volcano tamers and causing issues. Now, unfortunately, it was a difficult problem to replicate, but what I've been doing here is basically just dumping down triple volcanoes on onto a tamer and seeing what it does. Now, I have had some overheat issues because of this, because, well, it's three times as much iron volcano as normal, but I have managed to replicate the issue. Now, I've been doing some uh, testing here to determine what causes the difference between uh, debris and a tile to form. For example, here we have iron. Now, that's 800 kilos of iron just sitting there on the ground. And there's 801 kilos that have formed a tile. It turns out there is breakpoints for different materials as to when they will actually turn into debris and when they will turn into iron, if they're cooling from a liquid to a solid. So for iron, it's basically the breakpoint is if you have 801 kilos of iron, liquid iron in one spot, and it cools and solidifies, you'll end up with the tile. If you have anything less than 801 kilos, it will turn into debris. Pretty handy. The exact same for water and ice. So water, if it's cooled down below its freezing point, will form a tile at 801 kilos and will turn to debris at 800. Fortunately, all the rest of them seem to be a lot different. Those two are the only two that are the same. For example, here we have gold. Uh, 720 kilos is debris. 721 is a tile. Oh, sorry, that's copper. Uh, gold is 696 kilos is debris. 697 is a tile. And finally, we have igneous rock for magma. Uh, I'm going to be doing some playing with that later, but uh, 1,473 kilos will form a tile. However, 1,472 kilos will form debris. Now, I've uh, been using this information to do some playtesting and figure out how to deal with the problem. As you can see here, there's the iron, refined iron there. We'll just dig it out. Now, what happens is every time these uh, volcanoes erupt, what they do is they dump liquid metal down here. And the problem is I'm not cooling it fast enough. And because I'm not cooling it fast enough, eventually... Uh, 600 and what was it again? No, sorry, 801 kilos of liquid iron will end up here at some point. Not always. Occasionally it will happen. Occasionally it won't. Oh, please ignore the overheat damage. So you can see here the liquid drops down, and it's a liquid for a split second, just because we're cooling it enough at the moment. However, it's if you look at the iron there, the iron is 1,362.4 degrees. So what happened is the liquid metal comes in contact with the solidified or iron already, and that's 1362. We give it a split second, and now it's 1365. So it's actually raised the temperature of the iron that's sitting there in the cooling plate. So what happens is, depending on how often the volcano erupts and a, a bunch of other factors, at some point you end up with 801 kilos of iron, and it causes a solid chunk to form. Same with the gold volcanoes. At some point you end up with 697 kilos of liquid gold there and then when it solidifies you end up with a chunk and then you need mining and it's really annoying so i've been trying to come up with a design that doesn't use any new space materials or anything like that and can actually resolve this issue so you don't ever have to mine out any tiles never forgotten in the comments has uh, some some good information on this he did some play testing himself and i basically stole a bunch of his ideas and combined them with a few of my own to come up with a, a nice cheap solution that doesn't require any space materials and can handily eat three iron volcanoes simultaneously. Now, I haven't torture tested this yet, but I will before I finish the video, just to make sure. But theoretically, this is quite an efficient way of dealing with them, dealing with the issue. What I've done here is I've swapped out this steel door for, uh, or this wolframite door for a steel door. What I'm trying to do here is make sure that any heat that generates here immediately gets dumped into the steam turbine area. I basically just don't want any of the heat here. I want this metal cooled as quickly as possible so it has no chance to 
accumulate the uh, necessary quantity of iron or gold. So I don't want 801 kilos of liquid metal ending up here at any point. So steel has much higher thermal conductivity, and so long as I am efficiently moving that heat in there as quickly as possible, then these doors will never hit their overheat temperature of 2426. As you can see here, the metal volcano can actually spit out iron hot enough to melt it, but since we're sucking the heat out so fast, that shouldn't be an issue. Going with that plan, the plan was, I get the heat in here, but I need some way to make sure that that heat doesn't overheat this area. We're still only using steel, these uh, gas pumps at the top can only handle 275 degrees before they hit overheat temperature, or is it at 275? So I need to be able to store an awful lot more heat in here. Now, if I can store a whole bunch more heat in here, that means it'll be a much more stable room. The average temperature might average out at, say, 240, 250 degrees most of the time, as opposed to before. Before, what was happening was this temperature in here would spike up to 270 degrees. Then what would happen is it would pass through, a whole bunch of heat would be deleted, then the steam would get pumped back down, more heat would be injected, and I'd be deleting quite hot steam constantly. This actually generated me a little bit of power as well, it was quite good. But now what I'm trying to do is get the temperature in here to about 240, 250 constantly, and then I run it through two steam turbines. Uh, thank you never forgotten for that idea, it makes things much simpler. This way I get twice as much heat deletion for the same amount of gas pumps. True, this steam won't be quite as hot, but since I'm getting double uh, cooling out of it, it works out quite nicely. Now, another thing I did was I needed to increase the actual thermal capacity in here. Uh, normally, there was only about two or 300 kilos of water in here, and that has a decent amount of thermal capacity. But what I did was, uh, you'll see there's two thermal shift plates, one here and here, that are made of diamond. That's just to help move temperature out of this area rapidly. But then all the rest are granite temperature shift plates. Now, I know granite's a, a very unusual material to use for a temperature shift plate. However, there, there was method to the madness. Uh, I went through basically all the materials I could find. Diamond, unfortunately, it's, it's still pretty rare, so I, I didn't want to waste that. So I went through the most common ones, like um, igneous rock, uh, sandstone, sedimentary, clay, uh, dirt, all of those. Now, clay and dirt were actually quite promising, but they're still rare enough that I didn't want to waste them. Granite is quite common has very good thermal conductivity, not quite as good as water, but pretty close. Its spe specific heat capacity is about a fifth that of water, but I can dump 800 kilos of it in there, which means each tile of it's quite a lot of thermal capacity I can dump in. And since I've got a larger heat chamber, I basically up the water content in here to 600 kilos. So it's 600 kilos of water, then a whole bunch of temperature shift plates made of granite, except for the two diamond ones, which are help moving the temperature in faster. And then that's a, uh, steam basically runs the steam turbines and gets pumped back down again. This has resulted in it being able to eat three full iron volcanoes with zero issues. Uh, now I haven't implemented the full cooling solution at the bottom. Uh, I didn't want to because, well in all fairness this is just torture testing and I didn't want to, to waste my time putting in all the extra uh, bits and bobs. Now the iron is coming out at about 300 degrees which is perfectly acceptable for me. This whole thing, not only that, because we're actually running two steam turbines and getting a well, we're basically having our power consumption on the gas pumps because they only have to pump half as much gas it actually is much more power efficient as well so my next step here will be to basically let this run for about 200 cycles and make sure it eats everything with no problems and figure out what kind of wattage it's getting so i let it run a bunch in the background uh when i was do when watching stuff last night and this has had no issues this has literally eaten everything no metal tiles have formed it's conveniently demolish three iron volcanoes without issue. It's a pretty successful torture test. Now what's been happening is the, the steam in here is actually remaining quite constantly at a very high temperature, which is perfect. We're basically sucking the heat out of here really, really quickly, and these doors are engaged almost all the time. This has effectively prevented this from uh, ever running into any problems. Uh, as a bit of another test, I basically performed the same modifications here. Steel doors, and I put in a bunch of granite temperature shift plates. This stopped the overheating issue in here, and in fact, I was able to crank the temperature in here up to 275. That's how much temperature it can possibly handle, and this has stopped any steam up here from overheating these uh, gas pumps, so it's completely cut out the thermal issues as well. So even the older design with just some granite temperature shift plates and a couple of steel doors can still actually handily eat three iron volcanoes. Well, these are the iron volcanoes themselves. They're not actually particularly brutal, but there is three of them, so it's probably a worst case scenario that you could ever deal with. However, this design is not nearly as temperature efficient 
as this one is. This one just is uh, or power efficient. Uh, I think I worked it out, excluding the this uh, aqua tuner here, because we're not actually running that. That's just there as a part of the that's required for a later design. It takes about, on average, per cycle, about 50 watts. That's it, 50 watts uh, on average, well, a, co a constant 50 watts to keep this running, considering the amount of power that is generated by the two steam turbines. I've uh, implemented a little power shutoff here. So this means this design is far more energy efficient and all at the cost of, well, an extra, was it one, two, three, four tiles high in the actual de heat deletion box. I might start implementing this in some of my other cooling designs because it, it really is just a little bit more energy efficient. Now, I think this is the, the design I'll go with for the, the Mark II Volcano Tamer because I can I think I can safely say this would tame pretty much any metal volcano you could care to throw at it of any type ever. Uh, wouldn't handle magma, but uh, we'll get around to those later. Uh, as well as that, what I want to do is actually do a quick test. I'm going to block off four of the steam ports and four of the steam ports here and then see how much power I can generate out of this. Uh, I don't like using that method myself personally, but I like to give it a test just to see what kind of numbers we're looking at. Oh, one thing I should probably notice how much iron has actually cooled over its lifespan. It's something ridiculous, like uh, 150 tons or so of iron. So quite stable, quite long lasting, and I tested it for about 200 cycles to make sure that the, there was no actual metal tiles forming. Seems to have been quite successful. Yeah, so all I've done here is made a few modifications just to make it, uh, well, I needed to transfer the heat better, get everything around. I ripped out all the steam and replaced it. Uh, there was 600 kilos in here, but because of all the tiles I was filling it up, I chopped it down to 400 kilos of steam instead. And now these two steam type turbines are running, well, about 50% of the time. So they should be able to generate me quite a lot of electricity. Plan is uh, only two of these are actually active. Uh, the third one's actually gone into dormancy. So I'm just gonna let these two run, hook up all these batteries at uh, the start of cycle 380, and then see how in 10 cycles, how much of these 60 batteries or so I can fill up, or how much power I can dump into them, just to get a rough idea for how much power has been generated by this. Not too scientific, uh, I just want a rough estimate. Right, so start of cycle 380, all the batteries have zero power. There's 60 batteries here last I counted, and now I'm just going to see how long it takes for all of them to actually top up on power with this sort of setup feeding them. Now, if I wanted to be more efficient about this, I could cut down on how hot the steam is in here, because at the moment it's actually, they're both off. Until an eruption happens, nothing's going to actually power through here. But you could reduce the temperature on here and try and get more efficiency out of it, but this is more of a, a side waste product I'm working on. Uh, I'm not trying to actually mess with these volcanoes to get the most out of them, otherwise I'm going to get back to potentially forming metal tiles if I'm not removing the heat quickly enough. But uh, we'll see how that works out, and uh, I'll get back to you once the this is actually finished charging most of the batteries or 10 cycles have passed, whichever comes first. Okay, so it would appear that this is completely broken. Uh, I've managed to charge 60 smart batteries in, well, in a little over two cycles. And bear in mind I am, I do have two active iron volcanoes here dumping into it. So roughly on average, say one iron volcano would take and would charge this in four days. Uh, I need to do some more maths on this just to see just how ridiculously broken this is. Okay, so the calculator tells me this is generating about 1,990 watts of excess power uh, per second, which seems ridiculous because it's still got to pay for the fans. So somehow it's generating slightly more energy than it should be because those fans are working quite a lot. They should be eating into the power. Uh, I'm not quite sure. You could actually get more efficiency out of this if you maybe put in a third turbine as well. Uh, however, to distribute the heat better, I put in this metal string of tiles here, and I put in diamond temperature shift plates to help move the temperature from down here up here to make sure that this is active as much as possible, otherwise I was getting jamming. But yeah, if you really want to go nuts, you could uh, design it this way to actually generate lots of power for yourself off metal volcanoes, though it will of course be seasonal. These things do have quite long dormancy periods. Um, yeah, I've done all the playing I'm going to do with this. I'm just going to finalize this uh, the basic design for a metal tamer with none of these exploits in place. Uh, I prefer to use the non-exploitative version for obvious reasons. Being able to generate this much power just it kind of changes the game quite a bit, and I prefer to keep this uh, exploit free. Okay, so I pulled a bunch of power readings for this design. Uh, I effectively waited until all three of these volcanoes were up and running, um, pulled the power, averaged it over four cycles, 
worked out the steam tower ends were providing about 53% of the total power draw. The other 47% worked out at about 383 watts on average. Now, do bear in mind, that's for three iron volcanoes. So divide that by three if you want to figure out what the average uh, power draw should be for dealing with an iron volcano. Though it will depend, of course, on how big, your iron volca- uh, how big your iron volcano is, how much matter it's ejecting, that kind of thing. But you should be looking at more than 130 to 200 watts tops. Uh, the metal comes out at the end at about 16.2 degrees. So nice and chilled, which is well, perfect. The design changes, uh, I think, are well within acceptable margins. Uh, the biggest change is the extra four tiles I need here to fit in this extra steam turbine for the heat deletion and uh, more power efficiency. It's a, probably the biggest sacrifice. The Changing the wolf from outdoors to steel, that's an extra 800 kilos of steel. So that's a, a little bit of a sacrifice as well, but not nearly as big as the space requirement. And the the extra, the, these granite temperature shift plate tiles, they're, they're nothing. They're basically free material anyway so it's not like that's a big difference uh, by and large whole thing works out efficiently i've run it there's no overloads on any of the circuits so it still runs on a two kilowatt wire uh, you can hit you can eat three metal three iron volcanoes so it pretty much will work on anything it's a universal metal volcano tamer you can stick this on iron gold or copper it won't care however the power draw should be much lower on gold and a little bit lower on copper as well copper's about 75 percent now, I'll have to do up a, another video on this. Oh, by the way, there's uh, 600 kilos of water in here. And the reason I like to use multiples of 200 is if you get one of those uh, actual pitcher bottle emptiers, assuming your duplicates go and actually pull it out of a pitcher pump instead of, say, finding some loose water on the ground, they'll always carry 200 kilos of water. That's the maximum they can haul. So that's why I like to work with multiples of 200. It just makes it easier to fill things up and you don't have to worry too much. Now, I'll have to do a completely new tutorial on this, and I'll basically have to do a, a starting from scratch one just to make it friendly to newer players. And I'll have to remove the old one. I'll probably archive it or something. I don't know how YouTube handles that. I'll have to do a little bit of research. But uh, by and large, very happy with the design. This makes a, a decent upgrade on the previous one. And as well as that, the knowledge I gained about how igneous rock, magma turns into igneous rock, the, the actual breakpoint here, this means with a little bit of tweaking, I think I can take, a, say, a, a magma-powered petroleum boiler and make it mining and maintenance-free. As in, I should be able to engineer a way where always the magma turns into igneous rock debris and I don't have to actually do any mining to clear it up. I will, of course, have to place metal tiles under it and there'll be a whole bunch of testing and stuff I'll have to do to make sure that'll work. But I'm pretty confident I can make a, a maintenance-free magma boiler. Now, I hope this gave you a little bit of a, an insight into what... You, what I, what I actually spend a lot of my time doing in this game, which is usually in debug mode, just playing around with the different designs, trying to get something perfected. Uh, kind of feels insane at times. I probably spend more time in the debug mode testing things than I do actually playing the game. But I, I do enjoy perfecting these designs down to just make them 100% maintenance free. Sort of a, this is a sealed solution, as in you don't need to find any stuff out on the map to help you out. As long as you've got a bit of power, you can effectively throw one of these down and you're good to go. I kind of like all my designs to be you know, self-contained, maintenance-free little little designs. Hope you learned a few things along the way. Maybe you'd like to try debug mode yourself. Uh, I know some people have, uh, they refuse to use debug mode because they're afraid they'll be tempted to use it in the real game. I don't have that problem myself personally. I can't I can't cheat in a game. It just drives me nuts, I, I, even in single players. So uh, good luck on your future designs anyway, and uh, I hope this was uh, at least a little bit informative for you.